If you look at where the economy has been in past cycles, when it's been around these levels, we've been pretty much uh, either uh, we've we've been in many cases uh, moving towards a recession, and you can also say we were moving towards a soft landing. So it's kind of a never never land uh, right now. Uh, we the last tick was down; it was a small tick down. Uh, but pay uh, close attention to this. We think there will be uh, more more ticks down because we do think uh, that today's uh, unemployment rate was um, a, a harbinger of more soft employment numbers to come. Kathy highlighted a subtle decline in economic indicators, suggesting a possible uptick in unemployment rates and softer employment figures on the horizon. These trends hold significant importance in grasping the overarching economic landscape, particularly within sectors deeply impacted by technological advancements and investment patterns. As we analyze these indicators, it's crucial to draw insights from historical trends to enhance our foresight into future developments. Traditionally analogous economic conditions of frequently heralded recessions. However, given the distinctive circumstances of today's global economy, shaped by recent global events and rapid shifts in technological adoption, the outcome this time may diverge from historical precedents. We got a soft employment report. Non-farm payroll was 175,000. Expectation was up 240,000, so a big miss there. Uh, and if you look at the revisions, I think the downward revisions were 22,000. And we've had consistent downward revisions, which is uh, consistent with, um, with, I would say, not a soft landing, a harder than expected landing. Uh, another thing that goes into these statistics, and I haven't really talked about it before, it's pretty consistent, though, is, um, is something called the birth-death uh, ratio. And uh, this has to do with new business formations and bankruptcies. Uh, when we're going into a recession, that number tends to be revised down. Normally, the net number is a positive. And this last month, it was 110,000 uh, jobs net from this net new business formation. Um, well, if that's wrong, and it, as we enter into recessions or harder landings, uh, banks refuse uh, to lend money and they are refusing to lend money to small businesses and small businesses are not happy about this. Probably means that that 110,000 increase in employment because of net uh, new business formation uh, is an overestimate. So the employment numbers are probably weaker than what we're seeing now. And that's corroborated by the household employment measure, which was up only 25,000 last month. Um, we saw average hourly earnings up 0.2%. 0.2% uh, less was less than the 0.3%. It's down to, on a year-over-year -year basis, average hourly earnings growth is down to 3.9%. We got a productivity measure this past week, which on a year over year basis, non-farm productivity was up 2.9%. If you subtract that from the 3.9% uh, in terms of average hourly earnings, or even the 4.8 in the employment cost index, um, we're below 2% inflation. Uh, and so on, on this metric, which is the real way you should be looking at, um, certainly wage inflation, we're below 2%. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, that is going to continue to, to drop if we're right and the unemployment rate uh, goes up. Uh, there was one other, yeah, there was uh, one other thing to note, and that was the unemployment rate itself went up to 3.9. We think uh, in the next year, it could go up to 5%. Um, and these moves tend to happen ra rapidly. Here you can see uh, non-farm payroll employment on a year-over-year -year basis is pretty much flat. I think it's 0.3%. Um, that's with today's number. 
And you can see non-farm payroll has dropped below that 2% to 1.8%. Uh, and we think the deceleration will continue. If we go to the next chart, temporary help was down another 16,000. And you can see, except for the COVID uh, shock, uh, you have to go back to, I think it's 2014, to see temporary help uh, employment this low. So businesses tend um, to uh, not hire on a temporary help. If, uh, uh, if times are getting tougher, they'd prefer to cut back there than cut back on their full-time employment. On the next page, quits rate. The quits rate, it continues to fall. People quit jobs, and you saw this uh, in the aftermath of COVID, if they think they can jump to another job and get a higher uh, wage rate. Um, you can see that's been coming down. We're now where we were before COVID. Actually, you have to go back to 2017, 18 to see a lower number here. And you can see that the employment cost uh, uh, index uh, is, is coming down on a year-over-year -year basis alongside this quit rate. Um, here is another reason the, the restaurant sales are starting to capitulate. Uh, the personal savings rate is um, at a very low level. Um, you can see before uh, the 08, 09 uh, crisis, uh, the saving rate was similarly low. What was happening back then was home price home prices were spiraling to the upside and, um, and consumers were tapping into home equity uh, to supplement their, their consumption. Um, consumers are not doing that now. Uh, the interest rates uh, are, are too high, so they're not taking home equity loans like they were back then. Uh, so, uh, saving rates very low. If the unemployment rate now goes up, uh, the tendency for this number, and you can see this, what happens before the shaded lines on each uh, chart here, if the consumer uh, feels or consumers feel they're going to uh, lose their jobs, they actually try and uh, bolster their saving rate, which really hurts consumption. So maybe one reason those restaurant sales are starting to come down now. Um, here, just a reminder that we've been in a rolling recession uh, to see existing home sales drop from uh, six, nearly six and a half uh, million units to we're now in the four to four and a half range. Uh, that's been a huge hit. Of course, interest rates directly implicated there. On the new home sales, you can see uh, after after rising from 2010 uh, to 2020, they also have been in somewhat of a recession territory. You know, there is a, a, a housing shortage out there, and yet interest rates have destroyed affordability. And uh, and so even here, we're we're uh, continuing to see weakness. 